We've been looking at Hebrews this summer, and we're going to look at the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 3. Now, this is the Word of God. Listen carefully. Therefore, let us go on toward perfection, or maturity, or completeness might be a better way to put it, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ, not forgetting it, but advancing beyond it. And not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith toward God, instructions about baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. Hallelujah. Amen. A couple of years ago, uh, the AARP, the American Association of Retired Persons, had uh, some commercials that were on TV. And, uh, they featured their then CEO, Joanne Jenkins. And uh, the thing I really remember about it is that uh, she, had her, her, she had this kind of stance to her. And if it wasn't this kind of stance, it was this kind of stance. Always with a really elegant smile and kind of an impish uh, look. Uh, but what she evidenced in the, the message of the pose and the message of the messages was this uh, moxie. That, uh, you know, modern maturity has a, a forward lean to it. And uh, making the point that, you know, we can just get old or we can mature. And modern maturity has this forward lean. What I liked about that is that's exactly what the Bible says, that we have an inner self that uh, no matter the difficulties that our outer self, our bodies give us, we can have this and should have this forward lean because of Jesus Christ that gives us a, a, a bit of moxie about life. We've been looking at Hebrews and that author is writing to people who don't have this modern maturity. They don't have this moxie. And they don't have it because, well, this kind of maturity, this kind of forward lean takes effort. It, it takes effort every single day. It, it's not like exercise that, or where you just go, I, I've exercised for several years now, and so I'm, I'm good. I'll just kind of take off. You can, you can do that with money in the bank, but you can't do that with development of character and development of spirit. It's something that takes effort. And they were getting tired of the fact that they were into a gospel that didn't release them from effort. Also, they found themselves at that point where, you know, if you're going to advance, it means that you really have to let go of some things. You know, if you're going to advance into marriage, you have to let go of singleness, don't you? It, it just kind of, and if you don't, you're, you're stymied. And they found themselves in a not all in and not all out position. Uh, they liked having Moses as being the big guy and being fascinated with angels and even contemplating different kind of rituals and sacrifices. But he's saying all of that's passe and obsolete and you're going to have to fish or cut bait. After all, if, if you're not advancing, you're retreating. And the classic that Paul Bunyan wrote was the pilgrim's progress, not the pilgrim's regress or the pilgrim's treading water, it's the pilgrim's progress. And he says, I, I have so much to tell you, but because of your condition, I can't. I just can't do it. Uh, imagine, he's like the literature teacher when the 11th grader comes in, she's excited, he's excited about teaching Shakespeare and tragedy and the nature of the human person and uh, the, the students start to read and they're halting trying to form the vowels and consonants and they're going duh, uh, duh, g, uh, z, 
to store. You, you, you think, boy, if they're down there, we're, we're, we're dealing with mechanics. We, we can't pass through that to these grand visions that literacy and reading and literature provides. And uh, that's what he's saying is that uh, they don't have the mechanics down. And this points out that the Christian life is one that does have ABCs that uh, we work at and gain a fluency and pass through to greater visions of meaning about the world and our life. But if, if we're stuck at the ABCs, we're, we're really stuck about being able to move about freely and adeptly and maturely. And this conversation is in a basket that says that the Christian life is a practiced life. It's one in which there's actual knowledge uh, to be gained, and there are actual skills to be practiced so you get better. Uh, there's application. It's not unlike saying you want to go to dental school and that you indwell a tradition of knowledge and you learn names for the teeth and procedures and, and you're, you're given a, a bag, the medical doctor bag that has a, a little mirror in it and the, the probe and, and, and you, you figure out how to use those. And do, this is what the Christian life is like. And, and this may become as a surprise because a lot of times what we're told is you know, the Christian life is just saying Jesus, and then when you die, you're good. Uh, there, and, I mean, my goodness, this is an eternal life insurance, and it's even better than what you get in the Sunday paper. For that, you at least have to pay two bucks a week to get a $10,000 payout. This, you just say Jesus. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that this is a life that you enter into, that that gives you a kind of approach in a way of exploring reality that is the fullest way of living. And in this kind of life of development and spiritual modern maturity, there's something really important to get a hold of that he talks about here with the word foundation. And, and that is that to advance, you, you have to make some decisions and nail some things down. Uh, you know, if you pass by a field and a guy had bought it, and the first time you drive by, he, he's laid out cinder blocks and a nice perimeter, and it's about three high. And then a week later, you go by, and now it's too high. And a week later, you go by, and it's four high. And a month later, you go by, and it's two high. And a month later, you go by, and it's three high. And after a few months, if you see the guy in the field, you would be right to say, hey, guy, are you going to build a house here or what? But as long as he keeps laying cinder blocks and peeling cinder blocks off, he can't get on to, to build a house. And how that applies to you and me is, like, look at Jesus. Is he God or is he not? But don't rehash it every year because you're not going to advance. You're not going to build a house. Did he rise from the dead? Is the evidence there or is it not? Figure it out. Move along. Is he the best person to follow with your life? Don't follow him for one year and then Oprah the next and then Dr. Phil the next, and then go back to Jesus. You see, you're never going to get a modern Christian mature life built that way. These are just the facts of Christian life that are there hidden, not so hidden, in what the author of Hebrews is telling us. And he says, you know, I'd like to go on to other things, but... In fact, I think I'm going to have to go over some basics. And he, and he just ticks them off. And it feels to me, does it feel to you like he just ticks them off in a, 
an offhand way. It's like, for example, we're going to have to go back to repentance of dead works and faith in God and resurrection and laying on of hands. And, and I don't think he was thinking it was going to be an exhaustive list. And you could go to other places where maybe there's a different kind of list. And if you and I had a blackboard here today, we could say, well, what do you think the ABCs are? I was working on the session agenda last night, and in uh, my report, one of the things I said was, you know, it's coming up where we're going to have to train elders again. And what do you think we should be training them in? How should we be doing that? And it struck me that you could say, well, let's train them in making sure they got the ABCs, right? And now, for those of you who said you are going to stand in nomination, this might be daunting <laughs> to you, like, oh, no, they're going to ask me about the ABCs. But given the passage by Rice, don't you think that would be sort of a good thing to have us know, especially elders know, what the ABCs of the faith are? And so uh, we're going to look at the ABCs ever so quickly th this morning and realize that it's not an exhaustive list. It's not the only list. And there's more we could say about it all. But these are some of the things this author, just in an offhand way, says, you know, if you're a Christian, you should have some kind of handle on this. It doesn't have to be a perfect handle, but some kind of handle on it. And he doesn't want to retreat. He doesn't want to go back. So I, we can't label this sermon back to the basics. <laughs> we're we're going to label it forward to the basics. And uh, the first thing he says is repentance from dead works and faith in God. Repentance. Now, if you're like me, and most of the people I've been exposed to in my lifetime in this culture, we think of repentance as feeling sorry. I'm really sorry. And, and that's part of it, but it's just a microscopic part of it. Uh, the word is often talked about in sermons about repentance as metanoia. That's the Greek word. Noia is the word for mind, meta for change. So you say, well, change your mind. But a mind is something you think with. And the way I like to put it is it's rethinking your plan for life in the light of Jesus Christ. Rethinking your plan for life in the light of Jesus Christ. Now, there are businesses that have plans, right? Business plans. And uh, if you have a business plan pre-computer age, and then the computer arrives, do you think it's a good idea to rethink your business plan in the light of computers? Or the internet arrives, you think it'd be a good idea to rethink your plan in the light of the internet? Well, that's what he's saying is, is rethink your life plan about the nature of reality and what your priorities are, should be because Jesus appeared and he claimed to be God. And all the ancient promises were fulfilled in him. And if that's so, what are the personal consequences of that for you? Don't be oblivious to it. Don't say, I'll get around to it in six months or something like that. It, it, it's, think about it for you and for us now. And rethink it particularly with respect to dead works. Now, dead works are anything that has to do with us on our own. because. We're all going to die. And the Bible says, those who labor without the Lord labor in vain. And so whatever we just do on our own is, has got a finite terminus to it. It's, it's, it's dead. It's not going to last. But we were built to do things with God, the living God. And that's how things, including ourselves, can be alive. And so we want to let go of anything that's just about us and our own efforts. And us that doesn't take in to our business plan the fact that Jesus is. And that he 
lived and died and rose again. I was fascinated how Walgreens years ago uh, came down to this little economic lowest common denominator motor and said, you know, we can't sell things unless people come into the store. Wow. And they realized that they had locations that were off the beaten track and it was hard for people to come into the store. So they sold those stores, paid money for better locations so they could get a higher traffic rate which would result in greater sales. Now, if that's the new business plan and somebody comes into the room and says, well, you know what I think? I think all the clerks, sales cashiers, should wear black smocks. 